The Dark Lords of the Sith had many hated enemies, but the Jedi were always chief among them. Many Sith believed that the Jedi were the only enemies of theirs that truly mattered and that once the Jedi were dead, they would win, regardless of whether or not the Republic or a Sith Empire ruled the galaxy. To that end, many Sith trained as assassins who specialized in killing Jedi during the Jedi Civil War, and over the millennia, these assassins became highly skilled in their chosen specialization. They came close to wiping out the Jedi during the first Jedi Purge, even during a time when the power of the Sith seemed to be waning. But how did they manage this? What made these Sith assassins so good at killing Jedi? In this video, we'll be answering these questions. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The story of the Sith assassins begins with Darth Revan. During the Jedi Civil War, Revan attempted to transform the galaxy into a new Sith Empire, waging a civil war against Republic loyalists. Revan was a tactical genius, and in three short years, he managed to transform a third of the Republic into a Sith-led military machine. However, though he was officially waging war against the Republic, Revan believed the true war was against the Jedi. He saw it as vital to the success of his plans that he either convert all the Jedi to his cause or kill them. Revan went about achieving this task in a variety of ways, employing different techniques and agents to capture or kill as many Jedi as possible. Perhaps surprisingly, many of Revan's Jedi hunters weren't force sensitive. He made extensive use of assassin droids like HK-47, and he also trained a number of non-force sensitive organics and Jedi hunting techniques. As HK-47 himself later recounted, Revan considered these non-force sensitive meat bags to be especially important. In addition to traps, mines, and orbital bombardment, Revan and the Sith often employed meatbag assassins for some Jedi skilled in the same techniques that I was trained in. Strangely enough, Revan believed that meatbags that did not use or believe in the Force were especially important, since in many respects, they were more difficult for Jedi to detect. Revan had many of them trained to hide their minds as it were. Again, once these techniques were learned, the percentage of living Jedi began to decrease accordingly. Generally, this was done by broadcasting strong emotions while thinking about something else. It was a curious technique, but it seemed to be effective in blinding Jedi. Whether guilt, lust, fear, they act as mental interference, making finding the true intentions of the broadcasting meatbag difficult. Obviously, a Force-sensitive broadcasting such emotions puts themselves at a risk of not using the Force properly, since to use it seems to require an inner calm that most meatbags do not possess. As much as the Jedi could not use such a technique, the Sith Lords cannot use it for much the same reasons. Such passions as guilt, lust, and fear are really strengths to the Sith Code. Statement. The Master felt it was ironic that only people who had experienced such passions could harm Jedi in such a way that to kill Jedi, you had to be a human being. Revan found that quite amusing. Revan had these Jedi hunters capture stray Jedi and torture them with the ultimate aim of making them fall to the dark side. As part of this regimen of torture, Revan often had Jedi captives brought to a lonely world on the edge of his empire, Malachor V. Malachor V had been the last battlefield of the Mandalorian Wars, and in that terrible final battle, it had been transformed into a wound in the Force, crushed by mass shadows. Simply setting foot on Malachor was a form of torture. The artificial gravity put off by Malachor's mass shadows made trespassers feel like they were being buried alive. But for Force sensitives, it was even worse. To Jedi, Malachor echoed with the screams of those killed in that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars, drowning them in the power of the dark side. For the Sith, it was the ultimate conversion tool. Many of the Jedi who were brought to Malachor fell to the dark side. Those who fell were brought to the Treyas Academy, a fortress of the ancient Sith located at the heart of Malachor. There, they basked in the power of the dark side and were taught the techniques of the true Sith, becoming Sith assassins themselves. These assassins were then dispatched to continue the cycle, funneling increasing numbers of Jedi through the gauntlet of Malachor. 
During the Jedi Civil War, these assassins killed great numbers of Jedi, so many that, by the end of the war, barely a hundred Jedi remained. But Revan's plans for the galaxy were dashed when his apprentice, Darth Malak, betrayed him and seized control of the Sith Empire. Malak died soon afterwards, and in his absence, the Sith Empire spiraled into a vicious civil war of its own. The Republic eventually triumphed over the squabbling Sith remnants, which fled to the Outer Rim. But the remnants of the Sith Empire eventually regrouped at Malachor V, where they came under the control of the Sith Triumvirate, a trio of Sith Lords who wanted to continue Revan's war against the Jedi. Under their direction, the Sith Assassins, led by Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus, all but wiped out the Jedi Order during the First Jedi Purge. They were only narrowly defeated by Mitra Surik, the Jedi Exile. Despite their eventual defeats, however, the Sith Assassins were a force to be reckoned with. They used the force to render themselves invisible and struck from the shadows, ambushing their prey in small groups. Some elite Sith Assassins used lightsabers, but most used simpler force pikes against their opponents. But the true strength of the Sith Assassins wasn't their weapons or their attack patterns, it was what Malachor had turned them into. None of the Jedi who came to Malachor left with their minds intact. Those that escaped madness by embracing the Sith teachings were still warped by their experiences, seemingly deprived of their humanity. The Assassins, much like Darth Nihilus, only spoke ancient Sith, forsaking their native tongues and all communication with outsiders. Most of the time, they were simply silent. It didn't stop there, however. Malachor also turned these Assassins into Force Leeches, beings who fed on the Force to enhance their own power. They didn't just hunt Jedi out of some sort of ideological commitment. Hunting Jedi became instinct for them, a sort of compulsion after they experienced Malachor. The techniques of the Sith Assassins were summed up pretty succinctly by Kreia. Sith Assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed and grow stronger when they are near Force sensitives. If you're familiar with this era of Sith history, the way Kreia described the Assassins' compulsion as a hunger might sound familiar. One of the major Sith Lords of this period, Darth Nihilus, was infamous for his hunger for the Force and the raw power it gave him. Nihilus was a walking wound in the Force, a being whose mere presence killed all around him. Through the rare art of Force bonding, Nihilus would form connections with life forms through the Force and use them to rapidly leech away their very life force. During the first Jedi Purge, Nihilus did this on a planetary scale, consuming entire planets to feed his immense hunger for power. But Nihilus wasn't the only Sith to use this technique. It was as old as the Sith themselves, the ultimate expression of the endless, meaningless power hunger of the dark side. The Sith Assassins actually used the same techniques, just on a smaller scale. Nihilus was just far more advanced than they were. Sith Assassins weren't black holes in the Force in the same way Nihilus was, but they drew on the Force in the same way, sapping the power of others to strengthen themselves. They didn't use this technique to kill, but it nonetheless made them uniquely suited to hunting Force sensitives. This ability allowed Sith Assassins to sense and hone in on Force sensitives from across the galaxy. No Jedi could escape their notice for long. Sooner or later, the Assassins would find them, ambush them, and kill them. Sith assassins typically killed their targets through conventional means, but they sapped the strength of their opponents while they fought, making their jobs easier. The nature of these techniques meant that more powerful Jedi were actually easier for Sith assassins to track down and defeat, which is what made these shadowy killers such a threat to the Order. Indeed, the Sith assassins were a threat to the galaxy as a whole, as any of them had the potential to hone their techniques enough until they became like Darth Nihilus. Their teachings alone had the potential to destroy life itself. Fortunately for the galaxy though, the techniques of these assassins made them uniquely weak against Mitra Surik, the Jedi Exile. Surik had lost her connection to the Force, making her difficult for even the Sith assassins to detect and fight. Even when Surik became able to use the Force again, she achieved this by forming Force bonds with other Force sensitives, which the Sith assassins were unable to harness as a source of strength. Because of this, Surik was able to defeat dozens of Sith Assassins and eventually kill their masters. Surik ultimately destroyed Malachor V and the Treyos Academy, bringing an end to the last of the Sith Assassins. Later orders of Sith had Assassins of their own, but none of them drew on the same techniques as those in Revan's time, making them much less of a threat. There you have it. Just like Darth Nihilus, the Sith Assassins were just a bit hungry. But what do you think? 
Are there other Old Republic era topics you'd like us to make videos about? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.